Welcome back to the screencast on Your Surrounded. This is Unit 3. We're going to cover Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Montan's Law. Nature of gases. There are four things that we're going to look at here. Temperature is measured in Kelvin when we're looking at gas laws. You take your Celsius temperature, you add 273, and you get the Kelvin temperature. Pressure. Measured in atmospheres, kilopascals, millimeters of mercury, or tor. We're going to use these variables in some of the equations that we're going to do throughout the gas law unit. Volume. We're going to measure it in liters or milliliters throughout this unit. Amount of gas is going to be measured in something called a mole. We're going to typically use the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd moles, atoms, particles would be references to units. Gas laws. We're going to look at Bar Boyle's law, Charles' law, and review Montan's law. And then we're going to have a screencast on the combined gas law and ideal gas law. And there's worksheets and activities in your packet to help you understand these further. We're recapping here. Boyle's law. As the pressure of the gas increases, the volume of the gas decreases, and vice versa. Meaning, as the uh, volume decreases, the pressure increases, or as the volume increases, the pressure will decrease. Temperature and the amount of gas remain constant. It's an inverse relationship. The formula looks like this. It's P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Solve for the unknown variable. In Charles' law, as the temperature of the gas increases, the volume of the gas increases. That's a direct relationship. As the volume decreases, the temperature decreases. Direct relationship. Pressure and amount of gas remain constant. It's a direct relationship. The formula will look like V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Because we have T as temperature, and it's likely going to be reported to us in Celsius, you have to convert it to your Kelvin temperature. So to get Kelvin, and it should be an equal sign, Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. Again, there's an equal sign that should be right there. We apologize. Montan's Law, sometimes called the gay sachs Law, we're going to use Montan's Law. This one states, as the temperature of a gas increases, the pressure of the gas will increase. Volume and the amount of gas is held constant. It's a direct relationship. One variable increases, the other variable increases. Or, as temperature goes up, pressure goes up. If temperature goes down, pressure goes down. The formula looks like P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Montan law graph. You can see that it's a direct relationship. As your temperature increases along the x-axis, invariably your pressure increases at the same rate. If we were looking at Charles' law, it would be the same looking graph, except this y-axis would be in volume, because Charles' law looks at temperature and volume. This is an, an example problem. Pressure of a gas in a tank is 3.2 atmospheres at 22.0 degrees Celsius. If the temperature rises inside the tank to 60.0, zero degrees Celsius, what would be the pressure in the tank? It says always convert to Kelvin first. We have to do that because we're using temperatures. So what we're doing is we're writing out our givens. Our P1 is described to us as 3.2 and we know that that temperature is 22 because it says 3.2 atmospheres at 22 degrees Celsius. That's a P1 and that's a T1. If the temperature rises to 60.0 degrees Celsius, what will be the pressure in the tank? Well, they're giving us a second temperature, and we need to find out the second pressure, and that's why the P2 has a question mark. 
That's what you're solving for. So we dump in those variables into P1, T1 equals P2 and T2. That means this variable here is by itself, the P2. So we have to get P2 by itself. And in doing so, we end up with this equation here, and we come up with this answer down here. This is something you should write out. Bring it to class if you don't understand it, um, or look at some of the practice problems and see how this works and check the answers. All right? It's not that challenging of a formula, um, but it does help if you write your givens out and then plug them into your work and then solve for that unknown variable. What we want you to do is try another practice problem on your own. And this practice problem has several little conditions to it. So first of all, you should read it. As a gas, a gas collected in a flexible container, that's important, at a pressure of 0.97 atmospheres has a volume of a half a liter. The pressure is changed to one atmosphere. The amount of gas and temperature of the gas do not change. So what we want you to do, will the volume of the gas increase or decrease? Questions you should ask yourself. Which equations should you use to calculate the new volume of the gas? Again, we're reviewing Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Montan's Law. Calculate the volume of the gas at a pressure of one atmosphere. That's what we're asking you to do. So write up this question. Write down your givens, try to determine the formula that you're going to use, solve it, and come to class to check the answer. This has been your screencast on Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Montan's Law. Try some of the worksheets, come to class with any questions, and we'll see you soon.